ICOM's IC7410 gives you the best balance of technology, performance, and fun in an affordable package. In the top left-hand corner of the rig, we've got the power button. We've got the transmit button where we could instantly go into transmit without keying a mic. Would be useful if you're running external audio, possibly. We've got the tuner button. All you do is reach up here and hold down the tuner. And we're tuned. We've got an antenna switch or meter switch here. You know it says antenna one right now. That's because there's two antenna inputs on the rear of this unit. We can hit the button and select which of the two antennas we're currently using. If we hold down that button, then it changes the meter display. Now we're seeing ALC and compression down here. Hold it back in, it shows ALC and SWR, which is how I would normally run it since I don't run much compression. There's also a headphone input here for plugging in a set of headphones and not disturb the whole household. And there's an electronic keyer input here for attaching a key. Of course, we've got the standard microphone input. ICOM brings out the best DSP performance, combining more than 10 years of DXP technical know-how and much faster DSP processors. The two knobs and buttons here at the top allow you to adjust the DSP noise reduction and noise blanker. And these are very convenient features that you'll find on a lot of modern rigs. However, they're not all equal. You'll find that some rigs really sound horrible when you try to turn in that DSP noise reduction. Let's disable the two here and see what this signal sounds like with no noise reduction. Yeah. What's going on? I, I missed something. Are you not put his radio up? A lot of noise and frying there in the background in between transmissions. We can reach up here and turn in the DSP noise reduction and reduce that instantly. You can even adjust the amount of noise reduction with the knob right here. You can run it very heavy, which does affect the voice signal some but really cuts down the noise, or you can be more conservative with it to preserve some of the voice quality while still reducing noise. In addition to the higher speed DSP, the A to D converters provides a higher dynamic range and superior signal to noise ratio. You know, sometimes you've got impulse noises that are on a frequency you're trying to receive, and those are pretty tough to listen through. In a lot of cases, you can use the noise blanker to reduce that noise. And there's also an adjustment for the amount of noise blanker that you're running. ICOM introduced a double conversion superheterodyne design in the IC7800, an image rejection mixer for the second mixer stage is employed in the IC7410. This receiver design not only reduces electronic complexity, it greatly reduces the number of internal distortion points from older triple and quadruple conversion. Adjusting your microphone gain or the RF power output on this rig is really simple. There's no menu steps to go through as there's knobs built right here dedicated to those functions. When we key the microphone, we have the option to adjust how much microphone gain we want. I like to run mine just where the ALC is kicking a little bit. I don't want to run it over and slam it because that's very uncomfortable for the guy trying to listen. I'll generally run it a little bit lower than that. The RF power is adjusted by the ring here at the rear. We can see immediate response there as we start increasing the power up to 100%. So it's very easy to adjust the power output you want to suit the amplifier that you're running. We've got the AF, which is basically the volume control. Behind that, we've got the RF gain control and squelch. Now, the RF gain is handy because when you're listening uh, to a signal, a lot of times there may be some noise in there. Let's turn off these filters so we can hear the noise easily. You probably don't need the money. Uh, that's what most of these guys are after these days. Now, by turning up the RF gain, we can turn it down to where we're no longer hearing that noise and we're only hearing the signals that we want. The large multifunction LCD shows frequency, nine character channel name, channel numbers, S meter, RF output, SWR, ALC and compressor levels, and much more. There are a number of knobs across the bottom here that allow you to set the speed of the keyer 
uh, the break-in delay, the amount of compression that you're running, and also a monitor gain so that when you're listening to your own signal, you can adjust how loud that would be in your headphones. There's a preamp button here that allows us to select through two different preamps. Or if we hold it in, it will turn on an attenuator to attenuate really strong signals. Next to that is the Vox and break-in button, then the compressor, and then the monitor. Beside this, we've got a, a neat feature here that a lot of ICOM rigs have. Speech. S plus 20, 3.835 megahertz. Now, that can be handy if you can't see the rig, or particularly handy on mobile rigs. You can just hit that button and you don't have to look at the display. Over here we've got a lock button that we can press in, and now the VFO knob will not adjust the frequency. Coming back once again, we've got the menu button here that allows us to select through various menus that are on the rig here. There's not an abundance of menus since there's so many buttons here that take you to the exact function that you want. Uh, here we've got our mode keys where we can select between single sideband, CW, RIDI, AM or FM, and we've got a filter button here that allows us to select what width the filter we're using. Here we've instantly got three different bandwidths that we can receive in. Let me show you how you would adjust the bandwidth of a filter here. Say in this case we hear that station chirping over on the side there. Well to adjust the filter width we just hold in the filter button then press bandwidth then we can use the VFO to narrow or widen the filter however much we want. We can get it down so narrow that it's uh, really nothing but a little chirp there. Now that interference on the side there is gone, the little chirping is gone, and all we're hearing is the station that we want. The function buttons, of course, here allow you to select whatever function is currently displayed on the menu. Right here we've got the option of adjusting the AGC. You can see we've got slow, fast, and medium. Fast might be good for uh, listening to contest or noisy, weak signals, but I generally like to run mine on slow. It's more comfortable. Of course, the filters, we can see which filter we're on by pressing the filter button right there. You've got three different transmit bandwidths that you can select from just by pushing this button. SPC band scope position here. Let's do a little band scanning and see just how busy the band is this afternoon during the contest. Once we stop the scan, we can take this little dot here that you see right in the center there use the VFO knob and we can tune that around to find one of these conversations we want to listen to and tune right to it. Now let's look up here. The split button allows you to do split operation. What would be happening here is I'm listening on 3835 but when I hit transmit it's going to use this other frequency down here that I've dialed in 3838. AB allows us to have two different frequencies in the receiver at one time and we can push that button and quickly move between them. Now we don't need to be in memory mode for that. We need to be back in VFO mode here. We've got a 20 meter frequency here and on A we've got our 75 meter frequency. And We can easily swap these out by pushing the A equal B button. Uh, we can also scroll through our different memory banks and functions here with the up and down arrows. The IC7410 makes it simple for you to store frequencies into memory and you can name those memory locations so it's easy to scroll back through and find what frequency you want to be on. The XFC button here allows us to listen to the frequency that's in the opposite. If we're on A right here, we can hear B by pressing this button. Of course, across the top here, we've got our band select buttons 
we can select the 1.8 megahertz band, the 3.5, the 7, the 10, the 14, 18, 21, 24, 28, and 50 megahertz, since this will do 6 meters. It's also a numeric keypad here, uh, 1 through 9, as you'd normally see with a 0 here in the middle. The band stacking features on this radio make it simple to change modes when you're operating more than one mode on a frequency, and you can use the generic button here to put the radio back to default. Now normally you'd probably use the VFO to tune through and find the frequency that you're interested in, but if you want to go to a frequency quickly, you can use the F input button here, then you can just punch in the frequency right here on the numeric keypad. 3.862 and then press enter. And now we've changed frequencies that quick. The memory and VFO buttons here allow you to do the various memory and VFO functions like store frequencies into memory and step through the different bands. Now the tuning step button here, you'll see a little arrow come up above the digit there. This is how fast the VFO tunes. Right now it's on slow mode so we can get real precise and right on the frequency we want. But if we want to go faster, we can put it on TS there and now we can change frequencies much faster. The twin passband tuning allows you to shift the IF receive of the unit to make it easier to clear up adjacent signals that are interfering with you. Uh, you'll notice down here when I turn the twin passband tuning how this display slides over to the left and right and also shows us what frequencies we're actually tuning. Now these are two separate knobs so you can adjust each side of the passband independently here. Let's say you're listening to a conversation here and you need this particular setting to get the noise out of the adjacent channel. Once you're finished, you can push the passband tuning clear and that will set it back to normal. Sometimes, like during a contest, the bands can be so crowded that you've got signals jammed right up next to each other, causing interference. Yo, Kilo 3 Lima, radio contact. You hear that chirping in there? Well, with ICOM's twin passband tuning, we can slide over the IF passband and eliminate that signal. That's K3LR contest station, so we know that's an ICOM rig we're hearing. Now the notch filters allow you to do uh, automatic notch filter where the unit will automatically try to notch out a carrier or a tone of the frequency you're listening to. Or you can go to manual notch and then you can adjust the frequency of the notch right here to tune it out yourself. The automatic notch filter will hunt down that frequency and null it out immediately. Behind here is a CW pitch control that allows you to adjust the pitch of the Morse code. Below here is the RIT control that allows us to put a little offset on the frequency that we're listening to. We use the knob here at the bottom to do that. Say we're listening to a station who's using an older transceiver and they're a little bit off frequency. This will allow us to adjust how much off frequency they are so that we're hearing them clear but yet we're transmitting on the frequency that we have dialed into the VFO. There's also a delta transmit offset here. We can do the same thing with the RIT, except this affects our transmit frequency. In other words, we'll be receiving on the frequency on the VFO, but we'll be off by this amount when we transmit. And then there's the clear button here that allows us to clear out whatever was set in there. And the IC7410 has a built-in ready decoder. And you don't even need a separate monitor to, or computer to do this. Look right here, the, the RIDI is being decoded seamlessly right on the display. And RIDI tuning is a breeze on this rig because you notice there's a built-in RIDI tuning indicator right here that as you adjust the frequency, you can see when you're getting off. On the rear of the unit, there are a number of connectors that we've got available. Here's where you would connect an external tuner to the unit. 
This is the DC power input, the 13.8 uh, volts DC. Starting here at the bottom on the rear, we've got the ground connection. Beside that, we've got antenna input number one, antenna input number two, and there's an antenna switch built into the rig. Over here to the side, we've got a straight key jack. Then we've got an ALC input jack that could be used to control the level sent to an amplifier. Beside that, we've got the send control jack. This is what would key up non-ICOM linear amplifiers. Here is the accessory socket where we can hook in external equipment like linear amplifiers, automatic antenna selectors, tuners, TNCs, or a number of other different features, external audio in and out. Uh, right here we've got the remote control jack that is used for rig control via that protocol. Beside that we've got a great treasure here and this is the universal serial bus input. This will give you modulation input, audio output, ready demodulator output, and CIV commands. Uh, you can control the rig through the USB cable. Also, the conventional CIV remote control jack is still built in as well. Finally out here we've got the external speaker jack and you'll usually want to run an external speaker. I do. So in summary, the IC7410 really gives you the best balance of technology, performance, and fun in a very affordable package.